Hello, everyone, and welcome to week nine of USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorials. We have a fantastic tutorial today. Before we begin, please subscribe to the channel. Make this free knowledge go viral so that everyone can have access to this free knowledge and everyone can ace the USMLE exam. We're going to start out with a question. So the question here is a 68-year-old male smoker with a chronic cough presents with the following chest x-ray. The FEV to FVC ratio is likely to be, is it decreased, normal, or increased? And hopefully the chest x-ray will help you decide what the answer is to this question. And I promise we'll come back to this question at the end of the lecture. Okay. So we're going to talk today about obstructive lung disease. And there's four types of obstructive lung disease. There's asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema. And by the way, chronic bronchitis and emphysema are typically uh, they go hand in hand because many patients have elements of both diseases and then bronchiectasis. Asthma typically presents with dyspnea, tachypnea, and wheezing. It's the key to asthma is, is that it's a reversible form of airway obstruction, meaning that you have air trapping in the lung, but with bronchodilator therapy, it can be reversed. Okay. It's pathologically typically related to hyperreactive and hypersensitive bronchi. Uh, that results in reversible bronchoconstriction, which causes the symptoms of wheezing that we see um, clinically. It's often triggered by an infection, uh, maybe a viral infection, a bacterial infection. It can also be triggered by certain drugs like aspirin in adults. Most patients have this as children, and then about half of those children end up not having asthma as adults. So that's also very important. The imaging features of asthma are very nonspecific. There's nothing that's very specific about the imaging characteristics, but you typically see air trapping and obstruction on imaging. And what we see here is we have a CT image through the chest and there's these hazy opacities. This represents ground glass attenuation or mosaicism that reflects air trapping or small airway disease. And notice that some of these airways here, see these linear, lucid, you know, or, or hypodense areas with, you know, where the walls that are thickened, these are bronchial walls that have been thickened. So there's bronchial wall thickening here. So you have airway thickening with hazy opacity or mosaicism or you know small airway disease. That's representative of asthma, what asthma can look like on a CT examination. So nothing very specific. Now I wanna clarify what FEV and FVC mean. The FEV to FVC ratio will always be decreased in all obstructive lung diseases. So the F EV or the forced expiratory volume measures how much air a person can exhale during a forced breath. And it's typically measured in one second, two seconds, three seconds. So and the FVC or the forced vital capacity is a total amount of air that's exhaled during an FEV test. So you can imagine the FEV1 over the FVC will always be very decreased uh, in obstructive lung disease because of the air trapping. You can't exhale you know, your breath in obstructive lung diseases. So that's, um, that's seen in asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and bronchiectasis. And we turn to chronic bronchitis. This is defined as a productive cough for most days in a year for three months for at least two consecutive years. It typically presents with wheezing, dyspnea, crackles. Pathologically, this is related to hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the mucus secreting glands in bronchi. And unlike asthma, this is a non-reversible form of airway obstruction, okay? And again, the, the x-ray findings are you know, not very characteristic. They're non-specific, but what you can see is on this x-ray, as you can see, peribronchial cuffing. Similar to what we saw in the CT, we see airways with thickening of the airways. You can see these, you know, kind of tram track lines, you know, these dense, hyper-dense lines around these, you know, radiolucent airway, airways. These are airways that have been thickened. Thickening here, there, 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 there. You see all these airways that you can see the walls. You shouldn't normally see the walls of that thick on an x-ray. But the fact that we can see, you know, these thick linear lines that represent the walls of the airways of the bronchi, this suggests that there's evidence of chronic bronchitis or actually it suggests airway obstruction or air trapping. And in this case, this patient had chronic bronchitis. So again, the imaging findings aren't that helpful or specific, uh, but they can, they can help you decipher that there's, this, there's an element of airway obstruction here. Moving on to emphysema, this is also another, obviously, cause of non-reversible obstruction. This can present with dyspnea and a chronic cough. Um, emphysema is when you have permanent dilation of air spaces that are distal to the terminal bronchial. So we're talking about the respiratory bronchioles, the alveola, and you get destruction of the air spaces. You can have centroacinar and panacinar emphysema. Centroacinar affects the respiratory bronchioles. It does not affect the alveoli. 
and it's usually seen in smokers, predominantly an upper lobe lung disease. PNS and emphysema affects both the respiratory bronchioles and alveoli, um, and it's you know characteristically seen in alpha one antitrypsin deficiency or even in the setting of IV methylphenidate use or IV Ritalin use, and it characteristically involves the lower lobes of the lungs. And what you see on X-ray is you see hyperinflation. Notice that if you count, look how inflated this lung is. If you count the amount of ribs, the push your ribs, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven and a half. You should only be able to count ten normally. 10 ribs, okay? But the fact that we can count 11 and a half means that this lung is hyperinflated, it's hyperlucent, it's uh, darker or black than we would expect because of the, you know, because of the emphysema here. You have an increased AP diameter of the chest on the lateral view. Sometimes you can get flattening of the hemidiaphragm as you see here. We don't see it here, but we see it along this hemidiaphragm here. So these are all signs of emphysema on an x-ray. Hyperlucency, hyperinflation, increased AP diameter, flattening of the hemidiaphragms. On a CT, I want you guys to avoid this. There's a lot of chest wall sub-Q emphysema, but I want you to focus here in the lungs where you see all these, they're pretty much holes, dark holes in the lungs. That's how you can tell there's emphysema. These are all, you know, destructed alveoli air spaces, okay? The normal lung parenchyma is more like this area here where you can see some vascularity, some of the, you know, central, you know, secondary pulmonary lobules. But here we have complete dark, lucency or hypodensity, uh, ref which reflects emphysema here. You have, you know, emphysema along the periphery, emphysema, you know, within the, you know, the center of the lung parenchyma. This, these all dark area or dark holes or dark spaces, this is all emphysema on a CT scan. And finally coming to bronchiectasis, this, you know, represents permanent dilation of the small and medium-sized bronchi. So, you know, emphysema is dilation of the you know, respiratory bronchioles and the alveoli, but you know, more proximally, bronchiectasis is permanent dilation of the small and medium-sized bronchi. Typically, it's going to result in chronic necrotizing infection of the bronchi, resulting in daily sputum production, okay? Uh, these patients have recurrent infections. They're high predisposition to having pseudomonas infections. And on CT, what you can see is, if you look here in the right lower lobe, you see dilated bronchi here, right? Dilated airways, these round, air, dark areas here that are within the airway here, they're dilated here. These, this is what bronchiectasis looks like, these large circular dark areas, uh, which is different than emphysema, right? Emphysema was represent the alveoli, right? Um, you know, within the parenchyma of the lung, this is the airway itself, okay? Um, and you have, you know, round, large, round, dark spaces. This is, this is bronchiectasis. It can also present with, you know, hemoptysis. That's another thing that bronchiectasis can, can present with. Um, and it has some associations that we're going to get to in a second. So the U.S. Emily must know points here are there's four types of obstructive lung disease with asthma. You're looking for a reversible airway obstruction, wheezing. It's a hypersensitive bronchi triggered by stimulant, typically an infection. You have nonspecific air trapping on imaging, bronchial wall thickening against nonspecific. The pearls are, it often improves with bronchodilators. It's reversible. Chronic bronchitis is a productive call for at least three months, for at least two consecutive years. The imaging findings are nonspecific, and it usually coexists with emphysema, and it's a non-reversible type of obstruction. Emphysema is permanent dilation of the airspace is distal to the terminal bronchioles. You get hyperinflated lungs, increased AP diameter of the chest, those holes in the lungs that I was talking about on CT. It's it has a high association with smoking. The pan acinar type is associated with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and also IV methylphenidate use. And then bronchiectasis represents permanent dilation of the small and medium-sized bronchi. You get enlargement of the airways on imaging, and it's a chronic necrotizing infection with a high association with pseudomonas infection and pseudomonas pneumonia. So coming back to the question, the 68-year-old male smoker, smoker is a key here. Emphysema is associated with smoking with a chronic cough, presents with the following chest x-ray. So here we have you know, hyperinflated lungs, hyperlucency. This is a nice chest x-ray of somebody that has emphysema. Of course, the FEV, forced expiratory volume over forced vital capacity is gonna be decreased. It's decreased in all forms of obstructive lung disease. Very high yield question. I got something similar to this on my US Emily exam. As a bonus question, a 17 year old male with pseudomonas pneumonia presents with the following CT. What underlying condition could this patient have? Well, remember I told you that pseudomonas pneumonia, patients with bronchiectasis have a high predisposition to have pseudomonas. The CT shows bronchiectasis or bronchial you know, you know, enlargement 
within the right lower lobe bronchi. You should all know that cystic fibrosis is associated with bronchiectasis, right? Another exam, another you know, answer here could have been immotile cilia syndrome, right? Or Cartagener syndrome. Those all have an association with bronchiectasis that you should know about, particularly for the US MLE. Remember, alpha-1 antitrypsin is associated with emphysema, not bronchiectasis. I hope that was helpful. Tune in next week for another high yield USMLE uh, tutorial and please spread this to all your friends and peers. Thank you so much for your attention.